plenty of video game topics this month. We have the Resident Evil franchise reboot. There is piling on controversies one on the other. Could have abused that for a couple of views. Hey guys, did you know Diablo 4 just came out? You didn't? Uh, that's alright, neither did Blizzard apparently. Everybody's game is crashing. Oh, mine's not. Well, today we will tickle something I wanted to tickle for a while. Wrong metaphor. Do you like assassins? You probably do. And even if you don't, you are gonna. I want to take a stroll across the Assassin's Creed misguided franchise today. I will be talking briefly about my 8 year old commitment to the story, its complete cannibalistic destruction by this fucking thing. We will talk about the misfits of the franchise. Hey, some of them were alright. And then... Then we will talk about why Assassin's Creed Mirage could finally make up for this mental abuse. Now, I've promised you to take you back a bit to the year 2007 when the first game was released. Now keep in mind there were a couple of completely new game mechanics added with the first Assassin's Creed game. Ubisoft have at this point released a good number of Prince of Persia games and they were doing... Eh. Nobody disliked them but there is obviously only so much of the same thing a man can take which will be relevant later. Prince of Persia had very similar story playground as Assassin's Creed. We were walking around in deep history and altering, tweaking some of it, bending it just enough to fit our little story in. Now, the first in the franchise wasn't perfect. Hell, if you ask some, it wasn't even good. There were repetitive quests, stealth was almost cosmetic at times, and combat was as simple as the Batman franchise, minus the fun. <laughs> Perfect. Seriously, it got old after 15 minutes. Now to all that negativity, here's why Assassin's Creed made Ubisoft from the ground up. Verticality in games up until this point wasn't a foreign idea, but the marriage with open world games was. Coupled with the reason why you would want to actually be on the top of the roof, not on the streets, being assassin and all. This made for very immersive gameplay. The unique assassin tool, the hidden blade, has taken over people everywhere. Simple, but never seen before. Actually a useful tool that has been since apparently adapted by the Chinese military. This was also the first game that made those stories inside one. We are reliving genetic memories, which at the time in 2007 was actual study, Haltering between Desmond Miles in the not so far future and Altair in the Holy Land during the Crusades. This extreme contrast between futuristic and ancient history was unlikely blend that just worked. There were a number of mysteries that even made it into an ARG. Simply put, Assassin's Creed created a lot of fans through its first titles, and they were sadly completely dissolved by the company desperately trying to bring back something instead of going its own route. There is a lot that can be said about the downfall of Assassin's Creed games in the past 5 years, though you will have better luck finding a comprehensive documentary on other channels. The best way I can sum it up in 10 seconds would be to say that Ubisoft wanted to simply adapt to the ever-growing market. By the time the Desmond Miles storyline effectively ended, and with that any real motivation to learn more about the real story, the game started heading in a direction already paved by others. We had Origins, which was desperately trying to copy the gameplay of Witcher 3. <laughs> Syndicate was trying to grind on the newfound taste for Hitman games. Do I steal you now, or wait until the moment is more opportune? Odyssey tries to make us forget the hidden blade ever existed, one of the only real unique things left in the franchise. 
and then we got ourselves Valhalla. I know what I have to do, but I don't know if I have the strength to do it. A game many liked, although there was nothing left from the carcass of the original ideas, story or gameplay. Once again, stealth seemed more of a cosmetic choice, an option you can take if you want the gameplay to last longer. Direct combat was not only encouraged by newer games, almost inevitable. You could upgrade 12 items in your inventory, only one of them being your assassin weapon. The idea of stealth assassin game, set in historic times, following real life events, required two things Ubisoft couldn't afford to find and pay for, talented writers and unique new ideas. This made Assassin's Creed, as a franchise, just another tired production line copy of a copy, where the very identity of the title was completely broken in favor of Hey guys, you liked this better game? Well, here's our version with a hood on it. Without the hood. With all that being said, we are approaching the 7 minute mark and I do not want the majority of this video being a rant. Let's briefly recap what has happened to Desmond Miles' story. Throughout the franchise slowly developing its own vibe and gameplay style, only to drop it entirely later, the Abstergo, Templars and Assassin's War has been very comforting backdrop at which we always ended up looking. It was the connection to our world, to the reality and the reason for why are we looking at the Assassins in general, why the immersion didn't even matter and also why we were able to immerse all that much better. Ultimately, Desmond as a character outlived his purpose in the third installment which I would personally argue was the best in the franchise. Not because of its story with Connor or the gameplay, but precisely because of the Desmond Miles conclusion. The more you invest yourself in the Temple War in Assassin's Creed, the deeper you can get. On the surface level, Desmond always was a genetic key to a weapon that could save and doom the Earth. At the end of Assassin's Creed 3, his purpose is fulfilled and he dies. His legacy, by extension his father's legacy, has been sort of carried and tossed around the whole time, but it was clear that it's not the focus of either the story nor the writers. I.e. it's there just so it's there. Shame to say the least. And on that note, there is no reason to believe Desmond's story will be getting any new breath in Mirage, neither that I would want it or expect it. See, Desmond was never so vital to the Abstergo storyline as much as it was important that the point of telling the story behind the scenes of Animus, the genetic memory machine, will be kept up and running. We have killed and discredited Lucy, the love interest turned evil, and the rest of the crew was scattered into background completely. What Ubisoft thinks we want is the button smashing gameplay full of ridiculous stunts that will look cool, killing a bunch of NPCs and freeing another settlement. How about the settlement problem? Another settlement needs our help. I'll mark it on your map. Why? Well, because that's what worked for others and that's what they need to copy. So why is Mirage such a good news? See, Ubisoft has turned a lot of things around in order to revisit the roots. And again, that is not because they have finally realized what people loved about the games they used to make. The reality is exactly as you could have guessed already. The market is just ripe for this exact kind of revival. Resident Evil is doing very well with its remakes, 
Many PlayStation exclusives are getting a PC release, other games are getting a next-gen updates. Making new things is simply not a trend right now, remaking old things is. That and revisiting old stories. There is no other reason to think Ubisoft is taking the 180 it's promising with Mirage. They have even said that they are trying to bring back the parkour style from Unity and Syndicate, which was probably the best state that mechanic was at, ever. And we are not going as far back as the first Assassin's Creed game. We are getting a stealth game with parkour elements. Words we didn't see for a better part of 7 years. As for the mentioned Abstergo slash Animus modern day story in Mirage, seems like we are out of luck for the moment. Although there is a clear indication that Ubisoft didn't forget about the element being present, what will the game look like when it comes out and if there is gonna be any Abstergo story in other games, I couldn't tell you. Many people have asked for a remake of the first game in the series and so Mirage is for many the remake we will never get.